Dr. Norwood, we're here in a kind of a grotto in a uh, Dominican friars monastery in Antigua, Guatemala, at a gathering of several hundred physicians, most of whom are surgeons who specialize in the care of children born with congenital heart disease. It's 2010. In the middle of the preceding century, somewhere in the 1940s, a very preeminent professor of surgery at a very preeminent university in New England made the statement to his junior colleagues, any of you with the audacity to presume to operate in the human heart would undoubtedly lose the respect of your peers. Obviously, the circumstances would be very different if all young surgeons heeded that advice. But there's a fascinating history uh, that took place despite uh, the wisdom, if it could be said to be so, of that professor. From your perspective, where did that history begin? I don't consider myself a particularly great historian. I, all I can say is anybody that puts up this straw man in front of some young people who have in their own minds what the Holy Grail is, doomed to failure. Um, I think it's fair to say that m many people mark the beginning of getting in and around the heart to fix structural abnormalities that are impeding good function and limiting normal life began on the outsides of the heart with the great vessels. The individual that obviously a lot of people come up with is Robert E. Gross and his initial efforts with management of a patent ductus arteriosus. At the same time, he was quite interested in the structural abnormality of the aorta that is very close to the ductus arteriosus and probably related um, in some way to um, the function and the natural processes that go on in and about the ductus arteriosus, that is, coarctation of the aorta. His efforts and those of Crawford uh, across the pond, I think, demonstrated to everybody that it is quite possible to manipulate structures in and about the heart. And admittedly, the ductus arteriosus is outside the heart itself. And so is coarctation of the aorta, but they have profound effects on structure and function, deep effects on those things inside the heart. When you talk about deep effects, what are the deep effects? What, what was the impetus uh, for physicians to ask surgeons uh, to address some of these problems? Uh, how would a child with one of these structural cardiac problems be affected by it? Well, you're asking, in a sense, a physiological question. What is the physiological result of structural abnormalities? I mean, why in the world is a little bit of abnormal plumbing affect the pump, um, if you will? I think it is true that congenital heart disease in general is, can be looked at as a plumbing problem, not really a pump problem so much from the very outset. 